This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's community access radio station Plains FM 96.9 and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. Coming up next on Plains FM is Find Your Bliss. Good morning, Bliss Lovers. It is Rebecca Davison here, Intuition Coach, founder of the Intuitive Life Academy. Welcome, welcome, folks, to the show. It is great to have you here. This morning, uh, in case you don't know, Find Your Bliss Show, of course, is all about talking about all things intuitive, spiritual, psychic, esoteric, and mystical. So today we're talking about narcissists and how to spot a narcissist and this radio show has really been created folks from the fact that in the last week I had three separate conversations with three separate people who as far as I'm aware don't know each other and they all have a narcissist in their life and this is a very important journey for empaths especially wounded empaths, a wounded empath can very much easily end up attracting a narcissist. So um, I'm going to talk today a little bit about, because there's a lot in this conversation, but what we're going to focus on today is signs of how you know that you're dealing with a narcissist and a little bit on how you can actually help yourself and also too, why a narcissist is actually so amazing for an empath's spiritual growth because growth always comes from contrast and uh, where there is a narcissist there is always a contrast but um, we also too we want to go beyond that and learn what it is to um, cultivate compassion which can feel very difficult sometimes when we go through this list you'll have a better understanding of why it can be very difficult to cultivate compassion for a narcissist on a spiritual level sometimes it can feel like they don't have a soul because um, but I guess it would be helpful to look at it like a the way their brain has been wired in a way. So let's start unpacking this list and then we can kind of flesh it out a little bit. So one of the 10 signs that you're dealing with a narcissist is to realize that, um, you know, a narcissist always wants to be top dog. They always are looking to gain significance. Now, um, Tony Robbins talks about this in his six human needs, right? And one of them being certainty, uncertainty, significance, growth, contribution. Can't remember the other one. Welcome to remind me, folks. I should have Googled it beforehand. But significance, right? If you're around somebody who's always trying to gain significance, it can kind of feel like there's no oxygen left in the room. It can feel like that person's always pulling on energy. It can feel like um, here they go again. You know, they always manage to swing the conversation around to themselves. They don't really have the ability to... um, give you significance, to see you as an authority figure, to give you esteem. Um, Narcissists often really want to um, be seen, be famous, be an authority, be be admired, be revered. And the reason why they want this is because narcissists are incredibly insecure. So let's talk about that for a second before we go into all the other traits, because it's really important too, right? We don't want to go just go into a situation where we're turning a person into something bad. Always, if there is a pathology there, it has been created by something. So usually with a narcissist, it's been created by a toxic childhood trauma. You know, something's happened in their past and then they have enveloped themselves around that experience and creating all these needs and also kind of like a a front in regards to how they show up to other people. So it's almost like a funnel, right? If you give a narcissist attention or validation, it can just go straight through. You know, like those dolls where you you give them a wee drink and then they pee straight away. It's almost like that, right? It goes in and then it goes out. And so narcissists are incredibly needy. They have an unrelenting need for validation. They need you to compliment them. They need you to say that you're amazing, that you're unique, that you're special. And of course, if that is relentless, then it gets exhausting. You know, you end up feeling like this person doesn't see me. They don't hear me. 
they're not present to me, to my needs, to my need for validation, for support, for encouragement, to be seen and witnessed. So, with this toxic childhood trauma or event that has occurred, it's literally created neuropathways in their brain, which mean that they show up with this behaviour. Now, you don't always know that, right, when you've met somebody and they're starting to display these behaviours, this unrelenting need for um, attention. Look at me, look at me, look at me. You know, it can be, after a while, it can be boring, right? It can be frustrating. It can be like, can we talk about something else other than you? Can we shift the focus onto something else? So a narcissist will always have that driving force of needing to be special. You know, that's one of the easiest ways to identify them. They can't let other people share the limelight. They need to have the limelight on themselves because then for it reinforces that they're okay. So you have to kind of imagine that a narcissist really, it's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. You know, the Wizard of Oz is great and powerful and then everybody discovers that the Wizard of Oz is just a tiny human operating all these controls to create this front. It's helpful to remember that when you're dealing with a narcissist. They're actually massively insecure. Now, of course, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things because if you're coming from your ego and responding to a narcissist, you are going to get caught, right? You're going to get stuck. You're going to get trapped. You're going to get caught up in their drama, in their story, and in their energy. This is why dealing with a narcissist can be so beneficial for your spiritual growth because you have to go beyond that. You have to go find the solution. You have to be a bigger person in a way because this person is operating from a huge amount of pain. You know, a narcissist can't even tell often when they are lying. That's another sign that you're dealing with a narcissist, somebody who exaggerates everything, right? Everything's bigger or worse or more terrible than it actually is, you know, which is hard to be around this day and age, right? Because there's plenty of things out there that are worse or terrible. We've got Black Lives Matter, we've got Me Too, we've got COVID, we've got crooked politics. We've got child sex trafficking. There is plenty of fodder out there for it to be awful. But a narcissist has an uncanny ability to make it awful about themselves. So if they're the best, then they're the greatest. If they're the worst, then they're the worst, right? Like they're the ones who's suffering the most. They're the biggest victim. So again, being around that extreme behavior can leave you scratching your head. It can leave you going, what on earth is going on in this circumstance? I don't I don't understand this person. I can't relate to them. It can be extraordinarily difficult to be in that circumstance where you're dealing with a narcissist because they can come across as thinking very differently from you do. They can come across as seeing the world in a completely different way. And it is literally because the neuropathways in their brain have been created into a distortion because of this childhood abuse, trauma, whatever has occurred because it's usually in their past and again, you know, there's varying degrees of narcissists, just like there's varying degrees of abuse or trauma so, you know, you might have somebody who has low narcissistic traits or you might come across somebody and it's extreme you're going to be able to tell pretty quickly by the way that person behaves again, if they can't make anything about anyone else if it has to be all about them if they have to be the best if they have to be the one who receives all the limelight and often what will happen, right if somebody else is getting the limelight they will cut that person down they will criticise them they will judge them they will um, exaggerate they will lie So it can be extraordinary behaviour to be around. It can be confusing and overwhelming and shocking, to say the least, to be in circumstances with narcissists where you're like, oh my goodness, is this really happening? So even checking for yourself, right? So number one is that they need to make themselves superior and they come across as being entitled because of it. They need to be the best or to be the biggest victim, one or the other, because it's the most. They're always looking for the most kind of energy. Next one too, of course, is their desperate need for attention. They need to be the centre of attention. And if they're not the centre of attention, they will do what it takes to be the centre of attention by... um, You know, and if they see somebody else getting the attention, then they will do things like jump in. 
and they'll start talking about how, you know, if somebody's upset, they'll jump in and they'll talk about how terrible their life is or how awful their life is. Or if somebody's having an, a great acknowledgement, then they will endeavour to pull the attention away from them. You know, and this can be through words, through body language, through um, kind of scheming in a way. You know, sometimes, again, I know, even talking about it, it's quite shocking, right? The way that a narcissist is wired or how they end up with this kind of pathology, which means that they're constantly in a state of competing with other people. They're constantly evaluating whether somebody is their competition or not. They're in that state of like, how do I, you know, how do I prove to everybody that I'm better than this person? And it can it must be an incredibly fearful and lonely place to be because, of course, if somebody's trying to gain significance all the time, they end up with no friends. Nobody wants to hang out with somebody like that. Nobody wants to be in a circumstance where inevitably at some point along, along the line, they're going to be told, you're not as good as I am. Who wants to hear that? Nobody. So, and also too, I don't think narcissists, you know, depending on their level of pathology, they don't really understand um, why people aren't adoring them. They don't really understand how they come across. I'm sure, you know, if there was a different level of awareness, then they would make different choices because, of course, this behaviour keeps on reinforcing their unhappiness, which is so incredibly sad. But again, when you're dealing with a narcissist, look for these things. Do they need to be significant, entitled, top dog? Are they always looking to be the centre of attention? Are they pulling it away from... And again, if you've got a narcissistic parent, they can do this to a child. If you've got a narcissistic partner, they will be doing it to you, right? If you've got um, somebody in your workplace, like a narcissistic boss, they will definitely do it to, to you. So again, first thing superior, entitled, needing to be top dog. Second thing, undying need for attention and always pulling the focus onto themselves. Like if you're having a conversation with them, they'll talk about themselves. If you're experiencing something stressful, they'll talk about themselves. If you're um, going through a breakdown, they will talk about themselves. If you're devastated about something, they will talk about themselves. It's like they can't stop themselves from doing that. They can't hear you. They can't empathize, which is how the um, narcissist and the empath actually end up being attracted to each other. You know, a narcissist um, has a special way. They're often very charming, but they have this special way of... Basically, you know, especially if you've got an empath, empaths are sensitive, right? They're, they want to make sure everybody's happy. They feel other people's feelings. They're very caring by nature. A narcissist is not. So an empath and a narcissist together can be massive for empaths in terms of their spiritual growth because the empath starts to learn that it's not okay just to give your love and attention away to anybody, Right? You actually have to create some boundaries. And if you're around an, a narcissist, you're going to be creating boundaries pretty fast or you're going to be experiencing a lot of dissonance and unhappiness if you haven't figured it out. The beautiful thing about 2020 right, is the year of clear vision, which means the narcissistic traits and the sociopathic traits that we are experiencing on the earth plane, which show up in the forms of things like Me Too, Black Lives Matter, COVID, like I said, you know, all of these things are sh pushing against our consciousness and humanity. So narcissistic behavior is very much coming to the light. People are saying enough already. There is enough momentum within the spiritual community of empaths who have seen the light, who are empowered, stepping into their power to say no to narcissists. It's not okay. You can't continue to abuse me. You can't continue to lie. You can't continue to um, not take responsibility for your own feelings. You know, you can't cause havoc and get away with it anymore. 2020 is the year of the narcissist being revealed. Okay, so number three, they actually are really controlling you know, they are very controlling. They will control, they will endeavor to control your behavior. They'll endeavor to control um, themselves and presenting themselves as being perfect. So, which, you know, like to me, it just, you know, especially coming to an empath, because an empath, it's all about the feeling, right? It's all about feeling good. Uh, narcissists will control, control themselves, control their environment, control others, be controlling. So being around it as well, you know, I read a statistic that said that um, 
if you have a narcissistic parent, they've done brain scans before on children of narcissistic parents and they actually demonstrate post-traumatic stress disorder. You know, they have the same brain scans of people who've been to war. You know, that's quite shocking really in terms of what can happen if a narcissist is allowed to perpetuate their behaviour. And I get it, folks, because sometimes it's easier, you know, if it's your boss, you can get another job. If it's your partner or your parent, it's very different, right? Or if it's um, a friend, you know, at least you can disengage. But if it's somebody that you're related to, then, you know, you have to even be even more staunch and powerful in terms of how you deal with that. In terms of actually being the person who's um, going to stand up, going to make a stand and say, actually, I'm not going to do that, right? And this is very, very difficult often for empaths because empaths are often people pleasers. They often, uh, they don't have a boundary, but they have to learn that boundary really quick. And that's why often you're attracting the narcissist because on spiritual growth level, you have to learn what it is to create a boundary. And then, of course, the step beyond that, which is the higher level of spiritual growth, is to be defenseless. And I know that's something probably for a conversation at the end of this show, but defenselessness means that you don't need a boundary anymore, but you have to create a boundary to be able to let go of it. You have to be very aware. This is not a case of glossing over anything. There's one thing a narcissist will do. It is going to make you supersonically aware of what's true and what's not. Anywhere there's dissonance, anywhere there's lies, anywhere there's heaviness, it's untruth. And where there is untruth, there is a desperate need for truth to come so happiness can prevail. So again, first one, uh, superiority, significance, being entitled. Number two, desperate need for attention, always controlling the narrative, always. Number three, being controlling and being a perfectionist. Being perfectionist in regards to how they present themselves, their expectations of others, being very controlling in regards to how you show up, what you say. Every time you disagree with a narcissist, they take it as a personal affront, right? They cannot handle you saying no to them and they will create chaos if you do. Right. So, and again, I'm talking probably more about extreme narcissists, but really, folks, a narcissist only needs to have like five of these traits to be a narcissist. And I even have hesitation. You know, for the longest time, I would see this behavior in certain people, and I would be like, I wouldn't want to put a label on it because I was like, oh, a label is limiting, and, you know, it's not very nice, and it feels judgmental. And then I just got to the point where I was like, you know, I can always ask the universe, show me the truth, show me the truth, show me the truth truth <laughs> and when you ask the universe to show you the truth you will get it in black and white it will pull enough another veil off your illusion and a narcissist is it's not a label that we want to adhere to people because even as a narcissist there's still a limitless being in a body they've still come to the earth plane to have a conscious experience you know this is their experience this is their choice but if you have a narcissist in your life you know you really want to be the person who um realizes that you have to grow a lot of strength and courage in regards to how to dealing with it or you will get hurt you know a narcissist is kind of like a, a person who is an extreme version of hurting very painful energy to be around again because of these reasons you know what it's like if somebody tries to control you it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good in relationships. It doesn't feel good when you're out and about. It just doesn't feel good. It feels awful. You know, they um, they say and do what they want, right, without any consequences, right, which is shocking, right, to, especially to an empowered empath. You know, an empowered empath is somebody who's learnt that they have to have boundaries. An empowered empath is somebody who's learnt that it's not safe or great or good to continue to people please because it can be actually dangerous to continue to do that, especially if you're engaging with narcissistic behaviour. So if you have somebody in your life who's just saying and doing what they want, you have to learn how to say no. You have to learn as the empath on the other side of the story to say that's not okay. You know, you can't just say, you know, lie, say whatever you want and not be accountable for it. That is dangerous. 
And again, you can see why people go, um, you can see why people kind of allude to narcissists being kind of evil, that they have no conscience, that they have no soul, that they have no empathy, that they have no feeling for other people. But of course, folks, we need to remember as light workers that our job is to find the solution. Right? What is the solution to dealing with narcissists? A narcissist needs help. It's just like the victim and the bully. Everybody goes, oh, poor victim. The victim needs help. But the bully also needs help too. So even the empath needs help, but so does the narcissist. The narcissist probably needs more help than the empath does because they have a greater pathology. You know, they're more wounded. They have created a way of being that is creating them intense pain. Narcissists don't have a very good interface with other people. They cannot see where you start and they finish, right? They have no boundaries, which is why they will go straight into your stuff, Right? They'll go straight into your problems, they'll go straight into your misery, they'll go straight into your woundedness, and then they will start using that against you. Right? They'll judge you, criticize you, make you wrong, but it's almost like they, it's, you know, like, a, what's that word? It's almost like osmosis, right? They just take over. So, and again, that makes it very, very dangerous to be around people like that because it's not safe. It's not safe to be around somebody who's invading your personal territory and then using your feelings and emotions against you. That is a form of abuse, right? And we, if you're in partnership with somebody who's a narcissist, this can be soul destroying. And what the beautiful empath obviously continues to do is they go, oh, I can make it better. I can help this person. It's not your job to help that person, right? Your job is to actually go, sweetheart, you need help. You need to go and get professional help to be able to solve this problem. You know, and the recommendation often, from all the information that I've read about narcissists, the recommendation is often stay away, right? No contact, no um, no connection, no emotion, Don't give them anything, right? Nothing, right? I read an article and it said you do one of three things. You ghost them, you go no contact, or you greystone them. And greystone meaning that you don't engage, you don't talk to them, you don't communicate, you give them nothing, right? Which again, that doesn't really feel like a loving solution. The loving solution is probably to continue to encourage that person to get help, Right to find somebody who is very skilled at un- helping them unpack their childhood trauma. Herein lies the problem. Narcissists often think that they don't need help, right? Because that would make them less special. So you can see how difficult it can be because it becomes very convoluted. You know, they'll justify to themselves that they don't need help because that would be for commoners or they don't need help because there's nothing wrong with them or they don't need help because everybody else is creating the problem and everybody else just needs to stop that and then they would be okay. Again, you can see if they've got no boundaries and they're going into other people's problems, issues and emotions, then it becomes very tricky because what happens too with a narcissist is they don't realise that their feelings are theirs. Right? It's kind of like the inverted sign of an empath. Empath often picks up other people's feelings and emotions as well, but they usually have a better ability to kind of go, wow, I'm kind of feeling a little bit weird. They have the ability to take responsibility for what's going on. They get to ask that question, is this feeling mine or is it somebody else's? And then the empath can use their awareness to set themselves free. Whereas the narcissist, it kind of goes the other way. They go, I'm feeling bad. Other people have done this to me. They don't realize that their feelings are their own responsibility you know even if they've picked up an emotion from somebody else it's their job to do something about it rather than expecting people outside of them to fix it for them right so this is can you hopefully that's clear in regards to the pathology of how the narcissist mind works versus the empath the empath can take responsibility and do something about it the narcissist stays stuck in the energy of like everybody else is doing this to me so they just need to stop doing it and then i will be okay so again can you see how that links back into the control and it gets so frustrating to deal with this energy because you've got a narcissist and they can't even see that they've got a problem how can they ever get help help 
And this is why it can be so dangerous to be around a narcissist, like a narcissist who's not even aware that they have a problem. You know, from the conversations that I had over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, there's one person who was like, there's the truth and then there's the narcissist truth. I think often too, narcissists don't even realize that they're lying, right? They don't even realize that what they're saying is untrue. But it's very interesting too, right? Because they'll often go into control. They'll say something which is a complete lie, but then they'll often want to control what you're saying and doing. You know, so there often seems to be all these double standards where you're just sitting there going, you know, this is this is crazy. And even being around it can make you feel crazy because you're sitting there trying to figure out what the problem is, what the solution is. And you actually get to a point where you go, you know what, this is not my problem. What is it? Not my, not my monkey, not my circus, right? You get to that point where you have to go, it's not my job to figure it out for this person. It's my job to actually look after myself, to practice good self-care, to practice good boundaries, to say what it is that I need to say. There's a huge amount of YouTube videos out there, folks, in regards to how to deal with narcissists. And um, some of the really good ones, they'll say things like, you know... Um, great things to say to a narcissist like um, it's your choice if you choose to feel that way but I don't agree and to be you know like you have to get very good at being non-emotional with narcissists you never you never want to get emotional with them which can be really hard when they're behaving really badly <laughs> right you never want to get angry you never not want to lose it you never because they'll just turn around and use it against you Right, they'll use your emotion against you because they think that they're better than that, right? They're better than having emotion. Okay, so number three is control and perfectionism. Blame and deflect, right? Number four, they'll blame you for everything. All right, it's your problem, it's your fault. You're the cause of this misery. You're the cause of the problem. I've got this big list of things that you've done to me in terms of why you're so awful, you know, this can be so destructive in relationships. A narcissist cannot take responsibility for their own emotions. They cannot take responsibility for their own behavior. You know, they're like a loose cannon. So it's always someone else's fault. And you think about it, folks, this can go on infinitely. It's the government's fault. It's the, you know, it's the health board's fault. It is the politician's fault. It is that person's fault. It's your fault. It's never, ever their fault, right? Again, because of the wiring that's happened in their brain from their past trauma, what is effectively happening is they're seeing through a filter that says, I am great. I am significant. I am wonderful. So none of this could actually be my problem. You know, it is um, it's shocking to come across a narcissist, right? It's shocking, it's bewildering, it's frightening, it is um, despairing, right? Especially if you're a loving person, you actually want that peace person to heal. If a narcissist doesn't choose to heal, it leaves you with very, very little options, right? You want to make sure, and no matter who it is, you want to make sure that you are protecting yourself Right? Even if you're related to them, even if it's your partner, even if it's you know somebody in your workplace, even if it's a friend or a colleague, you want to be very, very careful about how you navigate that path and do it with a lot of awareness. You know, would you do that to somebody else? If the answer's no, then act accordingly. One of the best things you can really do with narcissists is remove yourself from them. That's not always possible. So you're going to have to learn some skills. And the skills are, what does a healthy boundary look like? If you are a people pleaser and you come across a narcissist, it's going to hurt right? Because you're never going to feel like that person's satisfied. You're never going to be able to give them what it is that they need because they're hurting inside of themselves. You can't fix that for them. It is not your job, right? Which is a big thing for empaths to learn. It's not your job to fix everybody who's wounded. Your job as an intuitive coach, right? My job has been to help people heal who are asking for it. Right? They have the courage, the willingness to step in and go, you know what, I can get my intuition to help me to create my own healing. 
I see my role as a facilitator. I'm not fixing or healing anybody. I'm facilitating them to heal themselves. That is true healing. So again, narcissists, we've got being superior entitled, needing there to be the centre of attention, controlling and perfectionist, blame and defect. It's never going to be their problem, never going to be their fault. It's always going to be somebody else. That gets tiring. Can you feel how heavy that is? <laughs> right, we've touched on number five four previously, no boundaries. Right, they have no boundaries. They don't have any issue going into your personal deepest parts of yourself and wrecking havoc, right? Blaming and judging you that you are that way or that you have this wound. They will stampede right in there because they have no boundaries and they will say whatever they want to say because they're often lying and manipulating, right? Deeply, deeply painful. You know, this is often a big journey for the empath to learn the boundary, to learn that's the line. If you go over the line, there are consequences. You know, again, a narcissist doesn't deal in consequences. They're the ones, they're like a bull in a china shop. They're creating chaos, you know, but as the shop owner, as the empath, you have to put a stop to it. You have to say, leave. You have to say, stop. You have to say, that can't continue. I'm not okay with that. You know, please remove yourself. Right? And again, learning how to do that. You know, if you're in a circumstance where you're um, being exposed to a narcissist on a regular basis, there is definitely a spiritual gift in that. There is contrast. That contrast can often be incredibly painful, but it's helping you to move beyond your ego into your spirit to see the truth, that this person's probably in your life to teach you a spiritual lesson, which is on the bigger perspective that you don't need to be abused, that it's safe, right, and good for you to have a boundary, it's safe, right, and good for you to say no, and that the universe loves you, and if you love yourself enough, that you can say no to anyone or anything who isn't bringing you love frequency into your life. Now, this is a huge thing for a lot of people, because often we um, are in family circumstances where we're receiving abuse from family members, right? So we're in that circumstance where we actually have to go, that's not okay, and learn how to deal with it. So no matter what your circumstance is, or no matter if you know a narcissist, are going out with one, are married to one, whatever your circumstance is, you really want to start going, what does a healthy relationship look like? And how can I make sure that I'm endeavoring to line up this situation with what the ideal outcome looks like? And if they can't come together, that you have to make some really serious decisions, that it's actually okay and an act of self-love to let go, right? No matter who it is. Okay, so number six, so number five was no boundaries. They can't see where you end and they begin. They kind of act like two-year-olds, right? Like a two-year-old doesn't have that conscious awareness, really. They can't, they can't express their emotions. They can't even identify their emotions, right? They'll reject, they'll pout, they'll control, and they don't like being told no. So again, number six, no empathy. You know, when you meet a narcissist, you're like, whoa, that person is self-involved. You know, it can be really like, oof, goodness gracious. You know, they, um, they expect others to think and feel the same as them. So when they get a different opinion, they can often be in that space, right, where they're just like, you know, you've, but you're the cause of the problem. You know, even you having a different opinion is a problem and you are the cause of that. They can't really see people as individuals because again, they have that no boundary, which must be uh, um, frustrating for them as well in terms of helping them to identify. Because you have to remember folks, a narcissist is an extremely painful way to live. You know, narcissists are going to have some awareness of the fact that they're really lonely. They're going to have some awareness of the fact that they're in a lot of pain. They're going to, you know what it's like when, you, I don't know if you've ever been in a circumstance where you've recognized where you're trying to control a situation and how it makes you just feel awful, 
right? And again, that freedom that comes from letting go of trying to control something, you're just like, you know, I've got to give this up to the universe. I've got to surrender this, which is often what happens with a narcissist. You have to surrender it. You don't have any other choice. You have to bring in um, universal frequencies and energies. You have to grow spiritually to know how to deal with it. You have to identify that it's not your problem and it's not your energy. And no matter how much you love them, you can't do it for them. You know, if you're with a narcissist and you can convince them to get some help, then that's awesome. But if they're not, then you probably need to make some other decisions yourself in regards to how you're going to deal with it because that energy and behavior is just going to keep on being perpetuated. So again, you know, it is tough energy, but it is amazing for your spiritual growth. Again, anywhere there's contrast, there will be growth. There has to be. You know, for a light worker to get stronger in the work that they do, to develop more resilience, to have more courage, there's nothing like having a narcissist in your life to help you to do that. They will teach you all about forgiveness, right? And the fact that you have to do it over and over and over and over and over again, which just strengthens your connection to the universe, helps you to experience more bliss frequencies, helps you to go back to heaven. You literally have no other choice than to rise above it and go into higher frequencies of energy go into source energy to help you to be able to get past it or else it will just consume you you will feel crushed you will feel contained you'll feel stressed you know I was even reading a list of things that happen to people the mental um, abuse that occurs for people who are around a narcissist you know, it was bad, right? Stress, insomnia, migraine headaches, um, your brain cells dying quicker because you're in such a stressful situation all the time. These are really serious health concerns, folks, like children experiencing post-traumatic stress symptoms. You know, these are important things. You don't want to ignore this. You don't want to go into default. You don't want to pretend it's not happening. You want to be in that energy of, I'm really consciously aware that there's something desperately wrong here, and I'm going to take some action steps on it. Okay, so, number seven. Everything is a threat. Everything. So, other people, um, life, trying to get a job. Um, uh, narcissists often can't hold down a job. Because they, um, you know, they have so much dissonance with other people. Other people are a threat. Strangers are a threat. Life is a threat. Um, doing things is a threat. Especially if, because a narcissist will often not feel any guilt. Right? They're beyond that. But they feel shame deeply. Right? They are doing a very good job of trying to protect you and hold a wall up so you don't see their shame. Okay, so remembering that when you are dealing with a narcissist as well, you know, you kind of have to see them like they're two years old, that they ha experienced a lot of shame, that they're very fragile. And again, you, you, and again, the thing is as well, what's so hard with narcissists, because you are just conversing normally and they're perceiving that as a threat. They're perceiving that unless you're saying that they're awesome or they're amazing or they're special, that you are a threat. You know, you're a threat to their personal reality. So they're always running kind of defensive energy. They're always in a perpetual state of being really fragile. They're always in a state where inadvertently you meant one thing and they will hear it as something else. I have seen narcissists um, twist things around, like take something that you know is black and they will tell you it is white. Swear black and blue and you're sitting there going, that's not what happened but they will swear black and blue that it is. Okay, so they see everything as a threat. And it pays to be aware of that when you're dealing with them. You know, they, that's why they need the control. You know, if they're feeling threatened all the time, they're going to try and control you and their circumstances and everything around them. Okay, so uh, number eight, like I said, harbour a lot of shame. I have a lot of shame. They have shame about what's happened in the past. They've built a careful construct around the fact that they don't want you to see it. They want you to see them as being perfect so it can reinforce that they're okay rather than collapsing into the shame and allowing some amazing healing to take place. They are spending all their time and energy putting um, a barrier between you and their shame, you know, because to them that would pretty much annihilate them. Okay, and they can't be vulnerable. 
Right. They don't make it safe to be vulnerable. They can't love or connect with others. They're very emotionally needy. So, <clears throat> you know, again, that comes back to the control. That comes back to that perfectionism, that need to be top dog. You know, if you're in partnership with a narcissist, you're going to probably feel exhausted because that constant need to validate them, to support them. And again, what will happen over time, you might be okay in the start, in the beginning, but over time, what's going to happen is you're going to feel resentful. You're going to be like, oh my goodness, you know, I never get seen. I never get witnessed. It's like I'm invisible. Like I'm literally here to prop this person up, okay? And again, that's not healthy. It is not good for you and it's not good for them and it is definitely not love. I have seen it in clients, folks, previously where they're in relationship with narcissists and what happens is they bless them. You know, they, um, they're they constantly supporting the other person and kind of reinforcing their identity as a good person to do that. Like, I'm a good person because I'm supporting this person, but they are invisible. They're not getting their needs met. They're feeling unhappy. They're wondering why they feel stuck, why they feel uninspired, because they're not getting their needs met. They're literally there for the other person. It's like they become a shell of themselves. It's quite frightening, actually, in terms of how it can show up and how it can present itself. Alrighty, so I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook now. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. If you want to hear the rest of the podcast, you can check it out on iTunes by searching for Find Your Bliss, or it's also on Spotify now too. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. Bye for now. I think I need to turn my laptop off because I think my laptop's getting a little bit hot there. So, folks, we're talking today about the 10 signs that you know that you're dealing with a narcissist. Uh, let's go on to number 10. They're envious or jealous of others and authority. So, again, I touch on that at the beginning. You know, very competitive, won't give you credit, won't acknowledge your accomplishments. Uh, if you do have something that you've accomplished, they'll talk about their own accomplishments. So, and again, hopefully this has painted a really good picture of what how a narcissist shows up. And I've probably used some more extreme examples. There might be more subtle examples because often too it can be really confusing because narcissists will know enough about cognitive empathy, which is they can mimic, you know, empathy. So you can often be very confused by a narcissist. Um, they're often very charming. So you can often be sitting there going, oh my goodness, is this really happening? Because this person on one hand seems so well put together, so awesome, but they're not actually being that nice. <laughs> Right. So let's go through that list again. The 10 signs. They're superior and entitled. You know, their feelings, that what's going on for them is more important than what's happening for you all the time. Um, they need for attention to be centre of attention. They need to be adored. They need to have fans, right? They need to have people in their life who revere them, who adore them, who cherish them, who stroke their ego, who validate them, who think that they're amazing because they need that constant reinforcement that they're okay. Number three, you know, controlling and perfectionist. You know, again, you can see how it all gets interlinked. You know, they demand to be in control, and if they feel like you're not in control, you know, if you're close to them and they feel like they can't control you, then they'll go into that number six or four, sorry, which is blame. You're wrong. This, you're creating this problem. You're, uh, you know, you're the person who's creating this issue because you don't think the same way as I do. They're very single-minded. They can't see anything other than what they think and feel. They can't allow other people to have a different opinion. That's, that's too threatening, right? So again, it comes back to needing to control people, which can feel awful, right, to be on the receiving end of that. Um, and number five, no boundaries. They can't tell where you start and they finish. Right? They don't have interface. Interface meaning, you know, this is me and that's you and in between us is our interface. They don't have that. They need you to, to say, I'm great, because probably because that's what they're thinking in their own mind and they need to hear it from you, right? That one-mindedness in the pathological way. No empathy. So they're selfish, self-involved, expect others to think the same way as they do. And, you know, the feelings, that feelings are caused by something outside of them. They can't take responsibility for their own feelings. They often lie, they often manipulate, they aggrandize everything. 
you know, make everything bigger than it actually is. You know, everything is a threat. That was number seven. They harbour a lot of shame. That's number eight. They can't be vulnerable. You know, it's not safe to share personal information with them. And again, if you suspect somebody's a narcissist, just be really careful around them, right? If you share personal information with them, they will use it against you. They will hold on to it for years and use it against you when the time is right, right? So again, you can see on a human ego level that if we're engaging in this behavior from the limited perspective of the ego, we are going to get hurt, right? We're going to get tripped up. We're going to feel angry, resentful, confused. You know, again, they're often envious of other people. So, you know, again... um, I've got this book actually, which is helpful in terms. It's actually a Pamela Stevenson one. You know, Pamela Stevenson was um, Billy Connolly's partner. So she talks in here too. You know, she says you feel like you're a very important person. You'd like others to recognise your superiority. You know, is this you or somebody close to you? Are you always imagining yourself as famous, powerful, brilliant, and irresistible? Do you believe that you're very special and should only be surrounded by other unique people? Um, do you have a need to be admired? Do you need to expect to receive special treatment? Do you need to sometimes take advantage of others to get what you want? Do you um, don't have empathy for their feelings or needs of others or are envious or sometimes accused of being arrogant? Okay, so again, see, these are some of the traits of the narcissist. It's a very painful condition, she says. And people with this disorder experience a high level of emotional torment. They spend a significant amount of time trying to nurse the acute psychological industries they sustain when they receive even slight criticism. Their grandiose style, lack of empathy for others, and feeling that they're entitled to special privileges alienates people around them. So they frequently experience difficulty maintaining relationships, family ties, social contacts, and jobs. They strive for power, acclaim, wealth, and prestige stage and may be willing to manipulate people and events to achieve their ends. Despite appearances, they have a very fragile sense of self-esteem and underlying feelings of humiliation and shame. Narcissistic personality disorder is associated with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, eating disorders, gambling disorders and bipolar disorder. So again, it's thought to arise from abuse. People with narcissistic personality disorder have survived emotional deprivation in childhood that lowers their self-esteem. So the best course of action is to get help. If you know somebody who is suffering from narcissistic personality disorder, your best bet is to encourage them to get some help. You know, um, to encourage them to get a very special and unique form of help which will appeal, right, to their significance. But if you're on the receiving end, right, you need to learn about it. You need to learn, you know, millions of YouTube videos out there, so go check them out. Um, You need to actually learn what it is to create those boundaries. You need to learn how to say no, right? You need to learn to be the person who's like, I'm not okay being around that, you know, and you need to learn to create, you know, you know, get your, go and get your own therapy, go and get your own help or encourage them to do things like mindfulness, um, meditation, eating well, making sure that they're getting enough sleep. You know, um, try to be aware that what you see on the surface of people with narcissistic personality disorder is very different from who they are underneath. Be respectful of their very considerable pain. I appreciate that's difficult, right? But again, if you have a narcissist in your life, they are showing you something. They are showing you where you don't have a boundary. They are showing you um, where you are getting going into distortion. A narcissist will tap on every single pain point that you have, right? They will find your woundedness and they will push it, push that button and use it against you. So they can be amazing in terms of your spiritual growth. You know, if you come across a narcissist, an empath, you know, like I put a meme up the other day, right, that says a narcissist's worst nightmare is an empowered empath because an empowered empath cannot be controlled. An empowered empath can see very clearly what is happening. An empowered empath can say, no, I'm not going to allow you to continue to behave that way. If you want to be abusive, then you're going to have to take that somewhere else. If you want to lie, then you're going to have to leave, right? You can actually put those boundaries in place. And again, you're the only person who's going to be able to do that. 
you're the only person who's going to know for yourself what is safe, right and good, you know. So today, folks, we have talked about what it is to um, identify the signs of a narcissist. Hopefully you've got some very clear information about what that is. But again, remembering there's a very big difference between going from responding to a narcissist from your ego versus responding to a narcissist from spirit. Eventually, if you are good at your spiritual practice, you can eventually actually say that you're grateful for a narcissist in your life because they've helped you to grow. They've helped you to see the truth. They've helped you to learn how to forgive. And with a narcissist, you will need to do that often. You know, you will need to um, transcend your ego through going to forgiveness and to see the truth, which this person is incredibly wounded and painful. And granted, it's not okay for them to lie, but you're the one who can put those boundaries in place and say, you know, sweetheart, you're wounded. You need some help. You know, you need to get support in unraveling what has occurred to you so you don't need to continue to perpetuate this behavior which is causing you and the people around you a huge amount of pain, right? When we get to that place when we can actually go, I can extend you some love and compassion rather than feeling angry or hurt, then we have evolved. We have moved into the truth. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed the session today. I'd really like to take the opportunity to let you guys know that this is a time of huge awakening on the earth plane. Um, definitely have some, we've seen some narcissists in um, the, our leaders taking some severe hits in terms of needing them needing to evolve and transcend their own narcissistic behaviours. So I really want to let you guys know that in the next coming weeks, um, Intuitive Mastery is being launched again. Now this time around it is a 10-month process program. It's my signature program. It's going to help you to identify, you know, what's holding you back from living a life that you really love. If you've had a narcissist in your life, it's going to help you to learn what it takes to forgive them. But it's really about reaching for spiritual leadership, you know, and everybody has intuition. It's about whether you actually activate it or not. But your intuition is the key to freedom. Uh, And everything that you need is actually inside of you. You are holding the truth in your body, but we often need to let go of what is holding us back from being able to perceive it, whether it's our own fear, our own doubt, our own limiting beliefs, anywhere we've picked up conditioning from thought leaders, etc., who aren't aligned with the truth, like our politicians often a lot of the time. If you're interested in really stepping into being in a whole different dimension in reality, then I'd encourage you to come and check out the Facebook page, which is just uh, the Intuitive Life Academy on Facebook. Come and join the tribe going to help you to be able to choose those love frequencies. We're going to help you to transcend and to be able to see the truth. And we're really going to help you to be that person who no matter what is going on in your life or in the world, that you can experience calm, right? You can learn what it takes to be free of suffering. Now, I know listening to this, you might think that's not even possible. It totally is, but you have to be willing to align with the truth. And the truth can often be confronting. So we can often need some help to be in that space where we are, you know, being facilitated into choosing and um, assimilating with the truth. You know, the truth might be that you're in a job that you don't love. The truth might be that you're in a relationship with somebody and it's painful or harmful or there's patterns that are occurring that aren't good, aren't healthy, aren't safe. The truth might be that you're not living your full potential, right? The truth might be that you're not listening to your intuition, even if your intuition is prompting you or guiding you or trying to tell you what to stay away from and what to move towards. So intuitive mastery is all about self-mastery. It's about being prepared to look inside and love what it is that you see. And we all need help to do that because often we don't do it by ourselves. We get caught up in distraction or illusion, Right? We reach for something to change our state like food or drinks or alcohol rather than actually being present to the emotions, learning how to witness our emotions and know that our emotions are our guidance system. You know, once we actually learn what it is to disassociate in a way, right, or non-identify with our body, with our mind, with our thoughts, we can experience so much more freedom. And goodness knows the world really needs people who are choosing to wake up, choosing to step into those higher frequencies of love, not just love from a place of like, oh, love, light and bunnies and ignorance. We're going to the deepest parts of our being, 
the deepest parts of our knowing to really step into that space where we're loving from a place of massive awareness. And that is the path that is required in terms of navigating this day and age. You know, if you're feeling called to to usher in a new consciousness, then intuitive mastery is absolutely for you. You know, if you're feeling called on a soul level to step in to being a leader to help other people back to the truth, back to love, away from those um, lower frequencies, away from untruth, then do come join us in the Intuitive Life Academy Facebook group. It's a free community. I'm in there every day supporting people, helping to raise the vibration, sharing information that's beneficial and with Intuitive Mastery coming up soon, um, being launched especially at the end of September, you want to be in there to take advantage of all the goodies that will be shared in those uh, and coming up to that. All right, folks, as always, it's a blessing and a privilege to connect with you. I very much appreciate you taking the time to tune in. If you have a narcissist in your life and it's hurting you, please, please do take some time to reach out to me and contact me. I can help you with that. Um, I know how painful it is. I know how confronting it is. And just know that even if you are a person who's a narcissist, maybe you haven't identified it, I'm sending you love too. But I'm also sending love to people who have been affected by it being on the receiving end I know what it feels like so I'm sending you so much love and light folks I'm sending you many many blessings lots of love bye for now bye